This week, the PCC Cup Series returns to Speedway action as they head to the Euro Speedway Lausitz in Germany, and which I believe is a welcome change of pace for the series, which has been doing mostly road courses lately. Uh, the qualifier was very interesting as there was quite a large accident in the early laps as uh, I believe it was Jan Schmidt got hooked by Tom Wilson, shot across the track, and slammed into Bobby Dollar. But those cars at that time were running full throttle around this entire speedway, but a new tire compound that was introduced uh, prevents that from happening, so it's going to be very interesting to see how these cars are running around Euro Speedway, uh, having to actually let off in the turns now. Earning the pole in his first ever race is Kale Burnfart Jr. in the number 51, replacing the late Craig Jaysner. R.I.P. Craig Jaysner, you will always be in our hearts. As he leads the field to the green flag, Joe Craig started on his outside, but he falls back almost immediately as Gaspar D'Souza, now his teammate, makes a look on the inside for the lead, and he will take it away as now Lenore Scurry and Lenny Jacobs come by on the inside to make it three wide for the second position as Gaspar D'Souza continues to pull away as now Brian Gallagher looks to make it four wide for second place, and he will do so as now Craig Jaysner, he goes way high, and he'll drop all the way back to about 7th by the time he comes through uh, entering turn 3. As now Gaspard Souza, he has opened up a big lead by lap number 2 over Lenny Jacobs, who managed to snag the second position away from his teammate Brian Gallagher. As uh, Gaspard Souza, he has had a good European tour so far, as he is primarily a road course expert, although he does indeed like these super speedway races, as evidenced here by the fact that he is leading and leading by quite a bit. His car is looking very fast right now. Tom Wilson, this is his debut and he is one of the upcoming rising stars in the Johnson Racing Program. He is one of their uh, championship caliber test drivers as he currently runs in the top 20. Uh, this car was unsponsored at the beginning of the season as things get a bit dicey there between him and uh, Jacob Eichholz and uh, I believe that is Pete Maverick on the inside but Tom Wilson doing a good job here so far. He's slowly working his way up through the field. Thryson Cup uh, jumped on that car for this race as Claire Aussier is having a terrible run here so far. She qualified in the back and she hasn't been able to make up much ground. She's currently running about 33rd position at the moment as we've got some contact up in front. I believe that was Jacob Eichholz and Ian Elias. We're going to take a look at that. As we go on board, Jacob Eichel here as Ian Elias pulls up the track, goes into the wall, and comes down into Michael Grant. And But they hold that together. Elias has a bit of right side damage. However, things wouldn't stay calm for long as caution one would fly on lap number five. Five wide is most certainly not going to work out this early on as Ben Worthington gets into AJ Murphy and they take each other into the wall. A couple other cars involved, Dan Lecklater, Ryan uh, Griffin, Sam Brown, among others involved in the back of the pack. Here is Lewis Jones as he gets a front row seat as Sam Brown takes each other into the wall. There's Dan Branch, Jim Zahofacker also involved. And I do believe that Lewis Jones will be able to get through this without much damage at all. I only think he got a tiny bit of fender damage. Coming to the caution, Lenny Jacobs is making a move on the inside. Uh, coming down the first straightaway into turn number two. And he does have the run on the inside, as the inside is the preferred line in turn number two, unlike in turn number three, where the high side will get a better run. But Lenny Jacobs does get the lead coming into turn number three, and it looks like Gaspar Souza is getting kicked even higher. So he will fall back to third place now as Lenny Jacobs leads the field to the restart on lap number 11, as there is already a battle for the lead, as it looks like Brian Gallagher is charging towards the front. I don't know if Lenny Jacobs is going to let him by, as they are indeed teammates, but uh, Brian Gallagher is looking very hungry right now as he makes a move to the inside, and Gaspar D'Souza also pokes his head in there, and they're going to make it three wide, headed down into turn number three, as I believe Lenny Jacobs is going to let up on the high side. No, he will get a run headed down the front straightaway, and I believe he will lead that lap and he comes out in front of his teammate, Brian Gallagher, who, slots, who lets him slot back in. Here is Claire Ausia, and she has moved up into the top 20. I believe she is running 17th at the moment, as a few cars in the back uh, made a few pit stops after that first caution, uh, trying to hope to uh, gamble on some tire strategy. 
Here's another guy who is making his uh, first ever start. Here is Dan Branch running in the number 888 Amp National Dew Chevy. And uh, he is a self-proclaimed super speedway expert, but he's not really doing so well. He got caught up in that first accident, so I think that's hampering him a little bit. And he's running in about 33rd position at the moment, just barely clinging onto the back of the main pack. However, I do think that he can mix it up uh, with the guys up front if he gets the chance to. Here comes Gaspar D'Souza battling for the lead again as he tries to make his way around Lenny Jacobs. He gets a good run into turn number two and he will attempt to complete the pass. He will pull it off and he will clear Lenny Jacobs headed down the straightaway into turn number three. And here's another driver who's having a good run so far as Barton Sandy is mixing it up in the main pack. He's running in 13th place. Uh, this Holden is surprisingly strong on the super speedways. He's managed to bring this car all the way up here and uh, we normally wouldn't expect to see him up here, so props to him. He's doing uh, wonders with that number 66 Holden. As now Lenny Jacobs is battling back on the inside. I think he might be able to pull off the pass here. He has to check up on the inside, but Gaspar D'Souza continues to hold on to the lead as now Brian Gallagher will make it three wide for the lead, headed into turn number three turn number one as he pulls on the inside and I do believe he will complete the pass headed into the second straightaway here uh, I believe this might be the backstretch head into turn number two as now Louis Ballard is making a move on the inside Brian Gallagher is stuck in the middle but now Louis Ballard is forcing his way through Manticore dominance seems to extend these super speedways as well as now it looks like Lenny Jacobs is going to battle back on the high side and he will hold the lead, but now Louis Ballard has brought a bunch of other cars up here with him, and he is currently running in the second position uh, by far. Uh, Kale Bernfart Jr. now re-inherits the third position from Clara Kindall, but Louis Ballard is catching. He is definitely catching Lenny Jacobs, as is Kale Bernfart Jr., who has managed to close the gap between himself and Louis Ballard, as Clara Kindall now on the bottom there is trying to make her way around Kale Bernfart Jr. for the third position. However, I do believe that he will hold her off. Here's another driver who's having a strong run so far is Kelly Blackwater. She's currently running in the 18th position, uh, which is much higher than she's been running throughout the rest of the European Tour, though. I do believe she has taken to these uh, speedways and super speedways quite well. So a good run is not out of the question for her. She's uh, looking pretty strong so far, uh, mixing it up back here with Greg Woodard, Pete Maverick, uh, I do believe that is Ben Worthington, and there's a couple other cars back there, including uh, Claire Ausier is only a couple positions in front of her. As here is Lenny Jacobs, he is leading over Cale Bernfart Jr., who managed to get by, I, he managed to get by Louis Ballard, who is dropping back quite a bit. There might be something wrong with that car, as here comes Cale Bernfart Jr. down the front straightaway to take the lead. He pulls on the inside, and it looks like Lenny Jacobs is just going to let him go. Oh, no, he is slow on the high side. I think there might be a problem on that number 52 car as he is dropping way back. However, Cale Bernfart Jr. has inherited the lead as, yes, there is definitely a problem on that number 52 as he pulls that car down to the apron. Oh, it looks like Cody Deke. No, that is not Cody Deke. That is Ryan Jeffries. Excuse me. He got hooked by Ben Worthington. As now, your former leader, Lenny Jacobs, pulls that car into the pit lane, and he will get what appears to be a fuel intake problem fixed as he pulls that car back out on track two laps later. He is currently two laps down, pulls that car, trying to merge his way into the main pack. He's trying to do all he can, and oh, he pulls in front of Greg Woodard, and that takes all of those cars into the wall. Huge mess here on lap number 28. Caution to a fly. Ben Atkins involved. Uh, string fellow Vincent Greg Woodard, and he slams into Greg Woodard, effectively killing his already damaged car. Now we're going to take a look at this from the helicopter watching down on Ben Atkins as, oh, he just had nowhere to go. He slammed right into Ben Worthington, took him into the wall along with Ryan Jeffries, and I do believe that Ben Atkins' day will be done from that incident as he drives away there. Stringfellow Vincent dead up on the high side. Now we're going to go on board Stringfellow Vincent as, oh, it looks like Lenny Jacobs just pulled right into him. Stringfellow Vincent goes into the grass, has nowhere to go, and he comes right back up into Greg Witter, tough break for them. It looked like those two might have been able to make it through that accident uh, had they not uh, collide with each other there. Uh, Louis Ballard beats Cale Bernfart Jr. out of the pits, and he will lead the field to the green flag on the restart, and he pulls out a massive lead 
over Burnfart Jr. back there. And it looks like, uh, I think, yes, Brian Gallagher is going to make a move for second on Burnfart Jr. And you've got the two Winslot Motorsports cars running in fourth and fifth. Cameron Taylor and Greg Maddox back there uh, really making some moves up towards the front. But Louis Ballard continues to hold a dominating lead over the rest of the field. Now Brian Gallagher, he's making a move up towards the lead. He has managed to catch up to Louis Ballard as now he makes a move to the inside, though I don't know if he's going to have the momentum here coming into turn number three. Uh, the outside line is traditionally much stronger in turn number three. He gets alongside of him, headed into that turn, and he looks like he might have the momentum, though no, he's going to have to check up and Burnfart Jr. will suck back up to him. He takes the high side, and Burnfart Jr. looks like he's going to try to slingshot around him on the high side, though now the inside line once again has a run. Here is Claire Aussier, and she has moved into the top 10. Uh, right behind her is Joe Craig, and he's been pushing her up towards the front. But now Claire Aussier really getting to show uh, the strength that she has in that car as Burnfart Jr. is pushing Gallagher towards the front as Ballard and him are even. Now Burnfart Jr. makes it three wide with Gallagher and Ballard. Ballard gets stuck on the outside. Now Greg Maddox looks like he's going to try to stick his nose in there. But Burnfart Jr. is going to hold him off, head down the straightaway here. He pulls up in front of Gallagher, and he has cleared uh, the main pack. Now Maddox trying to look low and try to make a run for the lead, but I don't think he's going to be too successful. That car doesn't have quite the downforce that Burnfart Jr.'s has, or the engine power for that matter. Here's the number 01 Lola of Daniel Sharp, and he's had a good run so far. He's currently running in the top 15 with this car, and he managed to get this car into the top 10 at Talladega despite the uh, attrition that filled the last few laps of that race. He also made the race at Chicago in the number 02, which uh, doesn't usually qualify. So Daniel Sharp definitely showing his talent here. He has only made, this is only his third start of the season, but he's run up in the top 15 in every single start he's made so far this, uh, this year. So good job to him. Here's Gaspar D'Souza. You're wondering what happened to him. He actually pit under the last uh, under the last pit cycle and had a horrendous stop and that dropped him all the way back into the 30s and now he's trying to battle his way back through he's currently 27th here on lap number 39 trying to work his way through there's Ian Elias and a couple other cars back there who actually suffered some damage here's Pete Maverick and he has moved up into the third place around Louis Ballard who apparently uh, there, there's uh, been some reports that that car is not looking the healthiest it ever has on the track. Uh, some issues being reported by Louis Ballard, including a vibration. But now Pete Maverick is making a move. He's up to third place, and Brian Gallagher is uh, going side by side with Cale Burnfart Jr. going down into the main straightaway, but he's not going to get the momentum on the bottom. And now it looks like Pete Maverick is going to try to make a move on Brian Gallagher there. And I think he's going to have the momentum here on the bottom. He gets alongside of Gallagher, and he wisely drops back. A good move by the rookie, not trying to risk it too early on, as uh, we're not even halfway at this point. Here is Robert Nelson. He's having a good run. He's currently up into the 17th position, and Gaspar D'Souza has worked his way through that, uh, through that back pack right there. And there's Richard Dean MacGyver running up there. All these cars are running in the top 20, and this would be a good run for all of these parties involved, aside from... Uh, Maybe Gaspar D'Souza, who should be quite a bit further up. Just that pit stop held him back there. Here is Joe Craig. He is having a stronger run than his teammate for the first time in, uh, I believe this might be the first time this year that he's had a stronger run, aside from maybe at Las Vegas Auto Ring. But he was running in the top 10 at the beginning of this shot. Now he's falling back a little bit, but he is hanging with the lead pack. Him, along with Ramsey Cockner, Tom Wilson, and a few other there. Uh, in the back of this lead pack are having very strong runs, uh, something that we haven't really seen too much of them in the past few weeks. Now we're going to go on board Cale Burnfart Jr. looking back on Brian Gallagher as he struggles to keep up with the, uh, the power under the hood of this number 51 car. This 51 has just been dominant all weekend. He won opening practice and he got the pole, so no surprise to see him up front, but uh, to be honest, I was kind of surprised to see just how dominant this number 51 car is as the 12 car starts to close in a little bit. Now we're going to focus on another battle that's been going on uh, kind of all by itself back here. 
This is the battle for 33rd position between AJ Murphy and Dan Lechleiter. Both of them were involved in the lap 5 accident. And they've been battling side by side ever since. Just kind of uh, minding their own business, putzing around back here. Uh, just trying to make the best of what's been a pretty bad day for both of them. Uh, both of them are pretty damaged at this point and about half a lap down. They're doing all they can fighting side by side. Here's Barry Juveno, and he has problems now. In his number 65, he's going to bring that car down into the pits. I believe that is a right front tire down on that number 65, Jack Daniels Tenere. And he is going to fall a couple laps down. I think he took out one of the cones there. But a uh, tough break for him. He pulls that car into the pits. And now Chris Winter is reporting brake issues on that number 56 car. Car is actually kind of having to use the brakes here. And that's going to cause some issues for the number 56 car as he is slowing that car down. Number 55, what is he doing? He pulls up the track, hits Lewis Jones, and that takes both of them into the wall. Caution three on lap number 57 as Chris Winter brings that stricken car into the pit lane. We're going to go on board with Lewis Jones here, whose luck just kind of ran out. And he just, Chris Benson merges up three lanes in front of Lewis Jones. I'm not sure what he was thinking doing that. That is uh, uh, an immense amount of brain fade that I haven't seen in a long time here in the PCC Cup Series. Daniel Sharp will lead the back part of the field down into the pit lane under the first lap of this caution. And uh, I don't see the top 15 pitting uh, this first lap, so interesting pit strategy here. And they come in the second lap, which means that this is going to put them in the back of the pack on this restart here. And that, I believe, will hand the lead to Daniel Sharp on the restart here with only 28 laps to go. Barton Sandy in second place, Robert Nelson third, and Kelly Blackwater in fourth place. Gaspar D'Souza rounds out your top five as he quickly dispatches Blackwater, and Barry Juveno is on the tail end of the lead lap, I believe at this point. Robert Nelson getting aggressive. He looks on the bottom, trying to get around Barton Sandy. Can one of these drivers pull off the upset? and get the win here, I think they might because the leaders are stuck. Uh, the former leaders are stuck way in the back of the pack as Daniel Sharp is now uh, getting caught by Robert Nelson and Barton Sandy. I believe that's the first time and possibly the only time all season I'll be able to say that. As now, Robert Nelson is looking low on Daniel Sharp, who uh, these cars are not the fastest in the field. as. They are trying desperately to battle for this win here, knowing that this is probably the only chance they're going to get all season uh, to shine like this here in front of uh, the, the German crowd here. As now, Louis Ballard has worked his way into the top 15 with only about 20 laps to go. He is right behind Michael Grant, who's running in 14th place. As you just see that hungry pack back there, slicing and dicing their way through the field. They've already dispatched much of the back markers that didn't come in. As we go on board, Robert Nelson here as he is desperately trying to get by Daniel Sharp. He pulls alongside, headed here into this turn. He's going to pull on the bottom in turn number three. He does not have the momentum, however, and Daniel Sharp will pull in front, and he will take the lead again. He pulls out to about a three-car length lead, headed into turn one, but Robert Nelson's going to battle back, and he is going to slowly cut that gap down again before attempting to make the same run again into turn number three. Uh, the grip on the bottom, however, is lacking in that turn, so that's going to hamper any runs that people have on the inside. Here's Kelly Blackwater, and she is currently running in the seventh position. If she holds this position, then kids will eat free the day after the race. That's a promotion that Golden Corral has been uh, ha that Golden Corral has had for the, uh, this whole year, and she's only finished in the top ten, I believe, once this season at Talladega. Louis Ballard has worked his way up to 12th position just a couple laps later, working on getting by Dan Ferre and Ian Elias as now Lenore Scurry is dispatching a couple cars in the back there as well. Uh, Louis Ballard looking very hungry, and he is within striking distance of the lead with just, uh, just about 20 to 15 laps to go now here. And they're working their way th through the field at a pace that I thought uh, wouldn't happen. Now Daniel Sharp is under attack from uh, Robert Nelson once again. But Robert Nelson, I think he will have the chance to strike at the lead this time. He's got some help from Gaspar D'Souza, who is going to give him a push here. 
on the inside. And he makes it three wide. And Robert Nelson will go down to block. Now Robert Nelson on the high side getting challenged by Gaspar D'Souza. Now Daniel Sharp falls way back. I think, yes, Robert Nelson will take the lead here in the closing laps. And he pulls out to a big lead over Gaspar D'Souza and Ramsey Cockiner. Ram Ramsey Cockiner, I think he's going to take second place here on the bottom with help from Daniel Sharp, who managed to get back into line. Ramsey Cockiner will slot into second place, but Robert Nelson having the drive of his life here in front of the German crowd here at Euro Speedway Lausitz. And he looks to be a favorite to win here today if the leaders can just stay back. Here we are on board Ramsey Cockiner with just 14 laps to go as he tries to make a run on the bottom trying to get around Robert Nelson coming into turn number three but Robert Nelson fights back on the high side uh, Robert Nelson driving very aggressively in that number 029 car he has only qualified for a few races this season this is the first time we've seen him uh, for a long time and he is trying to make the most of it just trying to stay in front as long as he can trying to get his name out there Lenore Scurry next lap she has managed to breach the lead pack and now she's only just a few cars away from getting up there and being able to challenge Robert Nelson for the lead as you see Ramsey Cockner and Robert Nelson side by side as there's a spin back there in the pack Cale Bernfart Jr. gets into John Bracci spins him around into the grass Bracci rights the car slams into the inside wall and that is going to cripple the engine on that number 19 car no caution though he tries to get he gets that car back on track gets it moving but he's unable to pull that car into the pit safely so he's going to try to go around again and try to make his way back into the pits the next lap as you see there a couple cars scooting by going on board Robert Nelson as you see there is the stricken car of John Bracci as he puts him a lap down on the inside there here's Claire LCA. Uh Greg Max shoves her low and caution for lap number 77 as that is your points leader going out of the race makes collision with uh, Barry Juvenal and Pete Maverick as well and that is a heartbreak for Mandacore Engineering as they had such a huge lead as Greg Max just forced her low, as you see from the camera angle there. Uh, it looked like Maddox just shoved her a bit low, didn't give her any room, and that forced her to run into John Bracci. Coming back to the line, Richard Dean MacGyver now trying to make a move for the lead on Robert Nelson. He will not get it, and Robert Nelson will lead the field to the restart here lap number 82 for the restart this is an 88 lap race we're going to have a restart with six laps to go your top five Robert Nelson Richard Dean MacGyver Dan Sharp Ramsey Cockiner and Lenore Scurry will the top four be able to hold on and pull off the upset we'll see right here as Robert Nelson takes the green flag Richard Dean MacGyver holds position and now Ramsey Cockiner is diving into position for third place and he's going to make it three wide with MacGyver and Nelson as now it looks like Cockner is getting a good shove in the rear from Lenore Scurry as she's going to make it three wide and put Ramsey Cockner in the middle as now Louis Ballard is moving up through the pack Robert Nelson trying to battle back on the high side here head into turn number three I don't think he's going to have the momentum as he falls back to fifth there, but he's, he's getting a very good run. Lenora Scurry will lead that lap. Robert Nelson in second place. Robert Nelson takes the lead back, but I think that's the last time he's going to see that as now he is stuck on the high side. And, oh, Louis Ballard is crowding Gaspar de Souza there on the inside as he pulls into his door. They're racing very hard for the lead here in the late stages of this race. Lenora Scurry continuing to lead over Ramsey Cockner with... Gaspar D'Souza in third place. They're starting to string that uh, field out as now Lenore Scurry. I think she's going to have this pretty much locked up unless uh, there's some late race challengers who are going to make their appearance known here. Dan Sharp and all the other cars have really started to fall back, but they're still being able to mix it up here in the lead pack with just a few laps to go. They're still running in the top 15. There's still room for a good finish as now Ramsey Cockner trying to make a move on the bottom on Lenore Scurry here with just a few laps to go but Scurry seems to be holding off everybody else as now it looks like Preston Bell has moved up into the top five as he's making a dive around Greg Maddox back there for the fourth position and now he's going to move up to third as he makes a move on Ramsey Cockner there on the bottom Preston Bell really starting to shine here late in the race as it looks like Louis Ballard has a problem he's going to pull that car into the pits he is reporting that the vibration has gotten much worse on that car 
and that uh, the crew should probably fix that. I think they sent him back out here, but two laps to go. Lenore Scurry leads the race with Preston Bell now up to second place. Preston Bell gets a great run on the bottom there, headed to the white flag. As now, Preston Bell looking for the win here. On the final lap, he makes a move on the inside of Lenore Scurry. And I think that Preston Bell is going to get the run here coming into turn number two. They're side by side on the final lap. Coming into turn number two, and Preston Bell is going to clear Lenore Scurry, and Preston Bell has the lead now. Coming into turn number three, will Lenore Scurry be able to do anything? She dives to the bottom, but she won't be able to make it stick, and Preston Bell will be your winner here at the Euro Speedway Lausitz. Coming to the stripe, Louis Ballard's problem would indeed be terminal as his car explodes in a cloud of smoke right after crossing the finish line. He will finish in 28th position. Preston Bell gets the win. Lenore Scurry second place. Gaspar D'Souza, very strong run for him in third place. Greg Maddox fourth. Ramsey Cockner gets a top five after that horrific accident at Central Russia. Richard Dean MacGyver finishes a very good sixth place for that team. Kids will eat free now on Monday as Kelly Blackwater finishes in seventh place. That Golden Corral promotion will hold true and she will get her second top 10 of the season. Joe Craig, great run for him. One of the few bright spots of his season so far. He gets an eighth place here. Cale Bernfart Jr., despite starting on the pole, uh, fell back to ninth. And Barton Sandy will round out your top 10. I'd also like to mention that Daniel Sharp and Robert Nelson finished 11th and 14th, respectively. Very strong runs for both of them and a very valiant effort trying to get their cars towards the front as much as possible for this race.